the Wii U. A console that some enjoyed and a console that some disliked. Is it still worth picking up in 2022? Well, here are my reasons why I believe it is a must-have console to have. As of now, the Wii U has sold a total of 13.56 million units worldwide. This is nowhere near the 100 million plus sales that the Wii made, but don't let that discourage your opinion on the Wii U just yet. The Wii U, first of all, is an upgrade to the Wii. Along with this upgrade, it allows you not only to play Wii U games, but to also play your favorite favorite Wii games. Like, even the Nintendo Switch does not have this feature. You can't play 3DS games, but instead, you can only play Switch games. The Wii U has a total of 783 games, but with the addition of Wii games, it becomes a whopping 2,000 plus games to play on the one console. The Wii U game library includes some really great titles as well. Super Mario Maker 1 was the first of the sequel that's now on the Switch. And let me tell you, when this game came out on the Wii U, it was a dream come true to many Nintendo fans. I remember the time when I picked up the game and gave it a play on the Wii U, and it felt so cool as I was able to do something I always dreamed of doing. Super Mario 3D World is yet another classic title on the Wii U. The various game mechanics in the game are just so fascinating, and the addition of the cat suit really sets the game apart from other mainline Mario titles. Mario Kart 8 as well was one of my favourite Mario Karts, and was ported to the Switch, and is now getting some brand new courses. All of these games I have just mentioned are games that have been ported on the Nintendo Switch, and made even better. This is because they held a certain uniqueness, and brought lots of joy to many of the people playing them on the Wii U. Something that the Wii U brought to us unexpectedly was the use of Amiibo! These things were amazing when they came out. They first became compatible for the game Super Smash Bros U, and after the hit of them, they later became usable in many other titles for the Wii U, and eventually making their way to use on the 3DS and Nintendo Switch. For me, I didn't really like using them in the game, but instead, I liked to collect all the new amiibos, which created a hole in my wallet, so I stopped. Others though have the whole entire collection, and every time a new one comes out, they race to their local EB game, or GameStop to get their hands on them. Now, you may be wondering after I have said all these lovely things about the Wii U, why did it fail? Well, first of all, the gamepad for the Wii U is a little bit of a problem, as it's big and clunky, and its battery life can run out pretty fast. An easy fix of this problem, though, is putting the gamepad on the charger, and getting out the Wii modes to play the game in TV mode. This is a fix, but on the other hand, it doesn't help the gamers that want to play the game on the gamepad at all. The biggest issue with the low Wii U sales has to be the marketing fact. Some of these ads were just really cringy, and most of them, if not all, aimed the product all towards kids. The reason for the Wii's success was the fact that anyone could play it, and it was shown in all the ads. In In my opinion, I think Nintendo went backwards in their ads for the Wii U by only targeting kids. Now, there are lots of positives about the Wii U and negatives about the system. The games that can be played can be really fun, and from a real life experience, I can say this with lots of confidence. So, is the Wii U worth buying in 2022? Well, yes. Thank you guys for watching, and I really appreciate the recent growth on the channel. See you in the next episode. Monkey Bar Gaming, out.